Uh, well, I read somewhere he tried to open a, an oyster place. Basically, his age at that point, because I think by then he was probably probably close, like into his seventies. Just didn't have the the energy for it, and it never kind of captured his former success. So it shut down within a year of opening, and then right. very very little is known about the last few years of his life. Seems like a pretty interesting guy, though. I like finding these things that I had like no idea about. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh... It's not really all that well known for some reason, for no real good reason either. You know? No, well, I've brought him up in conversation with a few people, and like virtually no one's ever heard of him that, in, that I've spoken to. And there was a book in 1917 by a bartender, uh, Tom Bullock. This was in 1917, so I think his father was a freed slave, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And uh, his book, the uh, the introduction was written by the grandfather of uh, George Herbert Walker Bush. Who uh, who became acquainted with him and you know really liked this guy and wrote the forward to his book, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. It seems back then hanging out in bars was just as popular as it is now. <laughs> not not right now. Mm. <laughs> not now at all. <laughs> but now generally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like to read about you know science fiction, like hanging out in bars. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we could do that? Go to the supermarket without dressing like you're going on a spacewalk. I still like avoiding certain people like they have the plague, but that's just... Absolutely. I've long, long done that. That bartending book uh, by Tom Bollock had a few interesting cocktail names. Uh, the one called Horse Thief Cocktail, Free Ooh. Love Cocktail, nice. Cohasset Punch, and one called Diarrhea Draft, which had so... ginger in it. So it sounds like it was more like a cure for it than yeah, 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 causing yeah, yeah. it. Which is a very weird name. It's not anything that I would I mean, order at the bar. And it, it basically, that's a level of conversation that I find most bartenders are not willing to have with you. How are you? Well, <laughs> that's true. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. This is a saying in England. Is like I gotta tell you. I could shit through the eye of a needle. <laughs> I like I like the sound of the uh, the drink. And this was apparently one uh, that you could get at Kato's as well. The uh, the whistle belly vengeance. Yeah, we've heard. I, I've seen a few references to that, which sounds really weird. It's like a a sour beer. Yeah, hot soured beer, sweetened with molasses, and then they would sprinkle stale bread in it to thicken it up. Which, That's really weird. Yeah, yeah I wonder I, if it's just a way of using sour beer. Like the flavor palette was different because they a lot of the their milk based drinks were drunk when the milk was curdled. Um, that was like kind of at the peak of when yeah. vinegar drinks were around, um, and sour beer. So yeah, I, th- I, think I guess if you're was... aging it in barrels, it's going to get sour anyways, depending on how long you age it. But I wonder if it's like a way of uh, like rescuing a beer that's gone off. It's like, yeah, this is a taste a little bit sour. It's like, well, I had this, this and this, and this is uh, a way of salvaging yeah. it, maybe. Yeah, yeah perhaps. I'm sure I can go to the LCBO and find a couple sour beers that taste like shit. And then we'll put some molasses and uh, some breadcrumbs. You know, I could I could list with. some likely places to find them, but I feel that they might get upset if we put this on the Internet. <laughs> Around Christmas, I read in around Christmas time, like he, uh, Cato was really good at making eggnogs and the Virginia eggnog. And around Christmas time, he'd make barrels of it. And uh, descend, a lot of uh, the Knickerbockers, the descendants of the Dutch settler, settlers of New York, um, would travel to Cato's to have some of the stuff around around Christmas time. But apparently, just make tons of this nice uh, Virginia eggnog, which sounds quite boozy, but also really sweet and like really thick i don't know if i we would try making some of this but it yeah. sounds pretty heavy i don't know how much of that could, i could drink no no even now like you and i'm sure it's not as probably not as thick and not as sweet as it was then um even now like a christmas like one eggnog two maybe and then it's like nope yeah i mean i can drink two eggnogs that uh my father-in-law makes because the glass is this big <laughs> this much eggnog and that much rum so it's like mostly rum a tiny bit of eggnog and uh yeah i can that, that's fun <laughs> yeah, yeah i can see that i can see that we'll try though we'll definitely uh we'll give some of these drinks a go fairly keen to try eggnog less keen to try milk punch but you know these huntsman's clubs the Bel- belvedere huntsman's club used cato's tavern uh as its headquarters in, yeah uh, in 1812 i don't know what these huntsman's clubs are I don't know what they do. Do they hunt? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, or is it just kind of one of these society type things where they get together and drink? And I, I definitely got more of a vibe that it was more of an excuse to 
it sounds cool and you got to go somewhere and drink and eat and yeah maybe, and i guess maybe, around 1812 you need a headquarters i mean they were uh losing the war against uh well, what's now Canada, when we burn their White House down. We should do that again. We don't need to. It's going to happen all by itself. <laughs> someone just someone just gives Trump some matches. Yeah. I've read more than once that the term cocktail came from Cato's Tavern. Yeah. And that the very first written reference to the word cocktail had some something to do with his tavern. I don't know if that's actually true or if that's just kind of anecdotal, but it's funny that this man, that he managed to have his such a successful bar that a lot of people went to at the time. Uh, like a lot of people will get in trouble for even serving a drink to a freed slave, let alone yeah a bar uh, being owned and run by one and a successful one at that. Yeah, you know, yeah. people were there heard references that they were fined up to uh, like ten pounds at the time for for serving alcohol to a freed slave, which back then would have been. That must have been a, a huge lot. sum of money back then. Yeah, I would think. But it seems like uh, like like Cato and uh, you know this Tom Bullock guy were were pretty well connected. You don't want to don't want to mess with the uh, that rich wealthy crowd's favorite drinks because they might come after you in other ways. That's true. Like, subscribe, hit buttons, all of all this that stuff, stuff down here. Um, because if you don't, you're not validating us, and we will just be crushed as human beings. So crushed.